Hello. In today's class, we're looking at food chain and food web. In this lesson, you will learn to differentiate food chains from food webs, how to construct a food web from food chains, and illustrate the transfer of energy between organisms. What is a food chain? A food chain is a linear feeding relationship which shows the transfer of energy from one trophic level to another. So it's basically a feeding relationship between organisms and also shows how energy is transferred from the sun down to one organism to another. We use arrows in a food chain and these arrows represent the transfer of energy. Every food chain starts from the producers as the first trophic levels. The trophic levels in the food chain are producers down to the primary consumer to the secondary consumer, then we have the tertiary consumer and then we have the quaternary consumer. So energy is transferred from one trophic level to another and like I said, the arrows shows where energy is coming from and where it is going to. Now let's take a look at a food web. A food web consists of several food chains in a single ecosystem. Food web can be made by joining two or more food chains. So the food web is a more complex feeding relationship because it has more than one food chain in it. How do we construct food webs? Like I said, food webs are made from food chain. We start from the bottom with the producers and then we have the consumers and then we have the different levels of consumers. So let's take an example. So let's say you are given two different food chains to construct a food web. So we have food chain 1 and food chain 2. For eight food chains, we have the producers, we have the primary consumers, we have the tertiary consumers, we have the quaternary consumer. So let's construct our food web from this food chain. So how did I construct this food web? So step one, you draw the base. Start by drawing the producers, typically plants, at the bottom of your diagram. Step two, add primary consumers, which are herbivores, above the producers. Step three, add the secondary consumers, that is carnivores, that eat herbivores. And step four, add any tertiary consumers, and apex predators at the top of your diagram and voila you have your food web let's look at the importance of the sun in a food chain and food web the sun is the source of most energy on earth all processes on the planet can be traced back to the heat and light energy it radiates. What is the sun role in food chains and food web? Let's take a look at that. The role of the sun is as the chief source of energy. The sun, the source of solar energy, and the solar energy is absorbed by the plant. The plants, which are the producers, convert solar energy into food through photosynthesis. The herbivores, which are the primary consumers, eat the plants and gain energy from it. The carnivores eat the herbivores and also gain energy as well. And then we have the tertiary consumers, which eat secondary consumers and also get energy as well. 
Now you can see that the sun was the primary source of energy and this energy had been transferred from one organism down to another. The energy pyramid. The energy pyramid is a graphical model or representation of how energy flows in a community. The primary source of energy is the sun. The sun transfers its energy to the producer. And the producer uses the energy from the sun to produce food through photosynthesis. This food is eaten or taken in by the primary consumer. But it is only some few percentage of this energy that are taken in by the primary consumers. Now, the primary, the primary consumers are eaten by the secondary consumers. And the secondary consumers are eaten by the tertiary consumers and then by the APS period. Now, I want you to know that energy is lost as it is transferred from one trophic level down to another tropical. So the available energy decreases as the level increases.